Tell you what happened to me yesterday. It's good to see y'all. They're all the sheeps. <laughs> Got all kind of sheeps up in here. Got good sheeps in here too, boy. Good sheep. I was talking to a few of my sheep last night about three o'clock in the morning. Want to know why my sheep wasn't sleeping? The shepherd was asking them, "What's going on?" <laughs> One told me she was. Uh, I don't know. I don't even want to say. <laughs> she was uh, up uh, looking for the ancient aliens or something like that. I don't know. I want to uh, listen to this right quick because this is going to bring us into the message. Yesterday, I told the Lord that I wasn't going to work on Fridays. And... I need to stick to what I say, you know, and so yesterday morning I got up to go out and, you know, um, work on a house because that's really what I need to do with all the stuff going on. And um, so I got up in the morning and, you know, I went and fed the animals and all kind of stuff and I grabbed the boards and I was carrying them up to lay them on my pad that I put in to start forming the other side of the slab. And my wife walks outside. Now, I'm already fighting not working, okay? And uh, that I really need to be preparing for you guys. Not only for you guys, but for me. And this is how the Lord works. So my wife walks outside. She says, what are you doing? And, uh, you know, I'm like, what does it look like I'm doing? You told the Lord that you wasn't working on Fridays, you know, and you need to stop. And you need to get with the Lord. And even with this song, you know, in the quiet you are speaking, you know, that Jason was singing and, and Pete that was up there ministering, if we don't set time aside to hear him, we can forget about it, you know. And this is amazing where the message, the Lord took me into this message with Lazarus. And I'm going to get into it. But before we get into it, I want you to listen to something really close. Um, it might sound confusing at first, but I'm going to explain it to you. And after I get through this first little part, um, you're going to catch it. Zach, are you uh, already recording? No, no, it's good. Listen to this. I'm going to try to. I'm going to get into the story today from the Bible. Um, we're going to get into. Uh, Pete, come move this uh, table, this thing over here for me, brother. Thank you, man. We're going to get into the story of Lazarus. It was actually uh, a book was given to me by another brother in the church, and it was on, you know. And I read the story, and um, but it, it took it so much further. And I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. But listen to this right here. Um, new revelation. Never saw it before. Um, I'm talking about Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, and Jesus coming to raise Lazarus from the dead, okay? So this kind of sounds, uh, where I'm going to start reading from, out of context, kind of, because I ain't giving you the background, but I, I feel like I need to read you this first, and then I'm going to give you the background of it, and you're going to really grab it. But what I wrote... Um, Jesus is actually going to raise Lazarus from the dead six days before Passover, the high holy day when he's about to die, okay? Six days before Passover. So I wrote here, this is happening six days before Passover and Martha is preparing the meal. And Passover is on the 14th day of Nisan. Y'all know that, right? Amen. Everybody knows that. So, if this is happening six days before Passover, 
if this is happening six days before Passover, well then, if we back up six days from the 14th, that's going to be the 8th, right? The 8th day. So, so this is the first month, Nisan, the beginning of the month, and it's the 8th day. So why is that important? Because the seventh day was the Sabbath, okay? So the eighth day is the beginning of the new week. And they're about to go to Passover. Passover now is only six days away. So you get this picture. You get this picture of, um, you know, they just came off of the Sabbath. Hey, um, please. Is she... Yeah, take her out if you don't mind. I don't, never, I don't never say anything, but they need to catch this. That's my niece. She's okay. No, no, I want them in here. No, no, I want them, no. I just want them to listen. So, back where we was. Catch this again. It's not a big deal. Kids are, are a blessing from the Lord. But I really want you to catch this. So, we know that Passover is on the 14th. The table's being set. Jesus is about to sit down and eat. Lazarus is about to be raised from the dead and all of this stuff. We know that Jesus died on the 14th day of Nisan, but the way this starts, and I'm going to read the whole story to you prior, it starts off by saying, you know, now six days before Passover. So now, Passover is on the 14th day of Nisan. We back up six days, that brings us to the eighth day. And that is actually the beginning of the new week, okay? So the day before that was a high hole, was a Sabbath day. So they are, you know, they can't do nothing on the Sabbath. They're resting. So now, the story starts off six days before Passover. This is the next day, which is the eighth day, but it's the beginning of the new week. Y'all with me? Yes. Okay. Now, this is why Martha is busy. Okay? Why? Because she's preparing for the High Holy Sabbath. And uh, the Passover is about to die. Uh, they're about to kill the Passover. You know, they all gathered up in Israel for this time. So Martha's busy. Now, this really caught me because we all get busy about things. Now listen to this. This is happening six days before Passover meal, and Martha is preparing the meal. Passover is on the 14th, so six days prior to that would be the 8th, which would, and would be the first... Uh, I'm sorry. Passover is on the 14th, so six days prior would be the 8th. And this is in the first month called Nisan. This is that new year. So if this is the 8th day of the first month, this is actually the first day of the new week because the seventh day was the Sabbath day rest. Did y'all get that? Yes. Y'all with me? Everybody? All right, great. This is why we see Martha preparing or serving because she is getting ready for the Passover meal on the 14th. Also, know that this is going to be a high holy Sabbath. Amen. Now, what's a high holy Sabbath? A high holy Sabbath is that this Passover is actually going to fall on their Sabbath day. So it's a high holy Sabbath. So seven days from now, that's why it says six days before the Passover, that would be the, uh, the next Sabbath. So if Passover falls on a Sabbath day, it's a high holy Sabbath. And that's what Jesus died on. So it's extra special, okay? So um, it says, um, let me go back. Um, this, uh, this is why we see Martha preparing or serving because she is getting ready for the Passover meal on the 14th. Also know that this is going to be a high holy Sabbath. There was much work to be done. This was the reason Martha spoke to Jesus about Mary. Just sitting at his feet. You see the difference between the two was one was preparing for the traditional Passover meal and the other sister Mary was actually sitting down eating the Passover meal. Amen. She was at his feet. Yeah. Amen. The Lord gave me this three o'clock this morning. I was 
about, I closed my eyes to go to sleep and he started speaking it to me. And I grabbed my pen and my notebook and, and wrote this about 3.15 this morning. He, he says, did y'all get that? You see the difference between, and I'm going to show you the contrast between Martha and Mary and Lazarus and Bethany and beyond the Jordan and the Mount of Olives and all what's happening in this area and what's going on because it's going to give you an a, a unbelievable uh, understanding of this. Um, you see, the difference between the two was one was preparing for the traditional Passover meal and the other sister, Mary, was actually sitting down and eating the Passover meal. You see, this was the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. And I am sure this would have been the topic of their discussion on this high, holy uh, Sabbath. You see... Um, meaning they would have been talking about the death of the Passover meal. So Jesus is, Mary is at his feet. They all gathered up. Martha's busy in the house preparing for it. You know, she's only got a week to prepare. It's a big deal. It's a high holy Sabbath. Millions of people are going to be there. Martha's sitting at the feet. She's more concerned about what she's doing sitting at the feet of Jesus. And she's, because she's busy in her house. And you see, the heart of Mary was the substance and to be in his presence. And the heart of Martha was the tradition and she wasn't concerned about being in his presence. <laughs> the Lord spoke this to me last night and he was correcting me. Because I was more busy than I, than I should have, than I wanted to be in his presence. Even though I'm doing something good, I really need to be in his presence more. Right? Let me read that again. Because, I mean, this was a word directly from the throne. He said, he said, um, the heart of Mary was the substance. That was Jesus. And wanted to be in his presence. And the heart of Martha was their tradition, and she wasn't concerned about being in his presence. She was more concerned about her house, and because of this, she was barren. Whoo! I'm going to show you why. Because if we look at her name... Can you read that again, the substance? I'm trying to write it. The, the, okay, substance. Mary, I'm trying to write it. Okay, the heart of Mary... Baby, you can, I'm your husband, you can get this by the house. No, but it's under the anointing right now. Uh, okay, the heart of Mary, the heart of Mary was the substance. And to be in his presence. That's true. But the heart of Martha was in the tradition. And she wasn't worried about being in his presence. She missed it. She missed it. You got that? Yeah. Okay. She was more concerned about her house. And because of this, she was barren. Now, what's amazing about this is if you go to Martha's name, Martha's, her name means mistress or lady. And mistress in the Hebrew Strong's Concordance means she's a married woman. But this word mistress from the Hebrew Strong's 1404 is a direct reference to Strong's number 1509, which means unfertile or barren. Woohoo, son! Did you hear me? No, say it again. <laughs> Martha's name means lady or mistress, meaning she was married. And Mary wasn't. I'm going to show you why. And mistress means a married woman. She was the mistress of the house. She was, it was her house they was in. She was married. Now, mistress in the Hebrew Strong's Concordance, number 1404, it means a married woman. But it's a direct reference from Strong's number 1509, which means unfertile or barren. She can't be fertile. She can't produce fruit if she's not at his feet. She's more concerned about the tradition rather than the substance. Wow. All right. Oh, my Lord, I'm fixing a rip at son. Wow. I can't believe I held that one back. That's all right. Give it up, I was about to let it rip. <laughs> Listen to this. It gets better. Man, this is directly. Three, about 3.15 in the morning, he starts speaking to me. I started writing. 
He says, he says, um, she was more concerned about her house and because of this she was barren. She was in the season but missed the reason. <laughs> wow. 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 She was in the season but missed the whole reason. She should have been at his feet. <sighs> Mary was feasting at the table and Martha didn't even know the table had already been set and prepared and all she had to do was sit down and eat. Wow. Amen. Yeah. Mary was sitting down and eating. It says, and all the men were gathered around the table and Mary was at his feet. She was eating too, but Martha was busy. Wow. So... Mary was feasting at the table and Martha didn't even know the table had already been set. <laughs> Amen. And prepared and all she had to do was sit down and eat. The meal had already been done. All the children were sitting down feasting off of the bread of life, the Lamb of God, at God's table. And Martha was still acting as a servant and not as one of the children. Oh, wow. <laughs> this, this is not mine. This is his. He gave it to me. <laughs> To share with you. Here, here is where we see Mary. Here is where we see Mary anoint Jesus' feet for burial because she realizes. You see, they're talking about the Passover. And in the midst of them talking about the Passover, you see, Mary gets it. She's blown away. She's the one sitting down at his feet. He's talking to the men that's at the table. They don't even realize it yet that he's the Passover meal. Because he told them right before he dies, she gets it though. She goes and gets anoint oil, anointing oil and anoints him for burial. She realizes he's saying, I'm the Passover. I'm going to be the one that dies. Hallelujah. <laughs> And all those that were sitting at the table didn't get it. Mary at the feet of Jesus got it. This is why she is seen again at the feet of Jesus. Not Martha. Ah! <laughs> there were two Marys at the cross. And she was one of them at the feet again. Because she got it. She was feasting at his table. She knew he had to die. She anointed him for burial. What did, the, what did Judah say? What are you pouring, breaking this alabaster jar with all this anointing oil? We could have gave it to the poor. She didn't have a clue. He was so far out of it, he missed it. Mary knew. Boy, Mary had something. She had him by his feet, son. And when you're at the feet, of the one. You see, Mary's name means abstinence. She wasn't married. Wow. And she was stubborn about, about it. This is why she wasn't married, because she knew who she was looking for. She was abstinent. Sitting at the feet, she wasn't married, but wanted to be married. How do we know that? Because she was at his feet. And if you remember the story of Ruth and Boaz, Ruth wanted to marry Boaz. Where did Ruth go? By his feet. To the feet. Yes. She said, I found the one that I want to be married to. It's him. Wow. You with me? Yeah. The feet also represents discipleship. Wow. Feet represent the gospel. She got it. She went and got her anointing oil, her alabaster jar. That's what she went and got. It was hers. And by anointing his feet, she was saying, I want you to be my covering. You're the one that I love. You're the one that I want. I'm not worried about the tradition of it. Look, man, I got the substance and she's holding on to it. She got it and none of them did. A woman got it before all the men got it. Hello. Hello. Amen. Wow. Who did Jesus appear to first? Mary. Right. What did you say? <laughs> oh my Lord. Mary was the first one to preach the gospel. Our Lord is risen. Oh, you crazy. 
<laughs> the first time the gospel was preached was by a woman. I went to the tomb. And he was risen. Wow. Amen. Don't tell me a woman can't preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. I'll shout you down, son. Amen. Sons and daughters would prophesy. That's right. Amen. That's exactly right. And if you realize that if you get it, if you're at his feet, you're a bride. Woo. Or not, he's the bridegroom and I'm the bride. That's right. The bride's job is to testify of the husbandman, yes. of the bridegroom. Wow. We're all, there's neither Jew nor Greek nor bond nor free nor male nor female, for we all are one in Christ. Amen. That's right. Man, you younger women, learn from you older ladies. Older ladies teach the younger women. Amen. Wait, let me get back. Whew. Listen to this. This is, this is like, whew. I minister from where I'm at. Yes. I minister what I learn. Yes. I don't minister this because I know it. I minister it because God said I was missing it and I was busy like Martha when I should have been at his feet Friday. Yes. And I'm glad I listened. Yes. Because I'd have missed it. Wow. <laughs> I'd have missed it. Many people are busy about the tradition of Jesus, right. profess Jesus, but don't know Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't know him. Know about him, but don't know him. You see, can I go back and just read? The meal had already been, had already been done. You know, all of the children were sitting down, feasting off the bread of life, the Lamb of God, and God's table, and Martha was still acting as a servant and not as one of the children. Here's where we see Mary anoint Jesus for his burial because she realizes who he is. And this is the reason she is seen at the cross at his feet again. Mary was feasting while Martha was in famine. Wow. <laughs> He's bad, son. Wow. He, I mean, it, these are words. These are not my words. They're his words. <laughs> Mary was feasting and Martha was in famine. <laughs> You see, it's your choice, feast or famine. The food you eat today, says the Lord, will be your life support for tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> and that's what he ended on. Wow. Come and feast yes. at the king's table. Yes. Yes. Children dismissed. <laughs> and we ain't even started yet. <laughs> Man, God is amazing, son. <laughs> Listen to this. Mary was feasting while Martha was in famine. And Mary, is that Mother Mary? No. This is Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, who he, who he raised. We're going to open the story up now. We're really going to, this story is going to open up because this is, it's all about us feasting at his table. It's all about his coming. It's all about, man, it's amazing. Mary was feasting while Martha was in famine. You see, it's your choice, feast of famine. The food you eat today will be your life support tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> Look, I'll, uh, I'm going to give this to, uh, I'm going to give this notebook to Charlene. Yeah, I want a copy. And Charlene, will you write this like it's supposed to? I'm a terrible writer. Straighten this out and, and you can make some copies if you guys would like to have it. Um, no, uh, no, it's in my other notebook, but I'll give you both of them. What's that? Is there more than one Mary? Is it, yeah, there's Mary Magdalene, which is Mary of Magdala. Yeah. That was Mary Magdalene who he cast seven demons out of. There's Mary and Martha. 
the, the sisters of Lazarus as Mary, you know, the mother of Jesus. Is this the Mary that broke the fragrance over? Yes. yes. Yes, this is Mary that broke the fragrance. It was at her house. Watch this. Come on, Brown. About Mary, everybody thinks Mary Magdalene's the one that broke the jaw because of Jesus and Matthew. Yeah, and, and I just want to tell you, my wife corrected me on this. If you ever watch the movie uh, Jesus of Nazareth and Mary Magdalene comes out over, you know, and breaks the alabaster jaw of oil over Jesus' feet, uh, that was the wrong Mary. It wasn't Mary Magdalene that done that. Exactly. It was the other Mary. It was Lazarus' sister. She's the one while they was in their house. So she had an understanding and knew. It's some it's good stuff. All right. Um, yeah. Um, that's right. That's right. They could have taken that and feed the poor and that's right. Yeah, incredible value. Um, so this is what the Lord had um, this is what the Lord had led me to last night. Are y'all ready? So let me just kind of go over some things for you. Um, before we read, because we're going to read a little bit. We need to read so we'll have some understanding. And uh, it's good stuff. All right. Lazarus' name, his name means God has helped. He was also called a friend of God. Okay? You know, remember uh, Lazarus, you know, uh, whom Jesus loved, you know, uh, was dying. All right. um, Lazarus' house was in Bethany. Bethany means house of poverty. So, wow. And Bethany, just so you know, was on the Mount of Olives. So this is where it took place, right outside of Jerusalem. All right. um, it uh, means the house of poverty. So these wasn't rich people. Okay? Um, Mary, so this, these people not being rich, you could see even more the cost of the alabaster jar. Okay? So Mary, her name means abstinence or stubbornness. She wasn't married but wanted to be married. How do we know that? Because she's found at the feet. And biblically the feet represent the gospel. They represent discipleship when you're at the feet of a rabbi. Or they, uh, we know that Ruth, uh, through her mother-in-law, learned that if she wanted to be married to Boaz, which was the kinsman's redeemer, she needed to go at his feet. Right? And here is Mary at the feet of Jesus. And she, he's at the feet. She gets the alabaster jaw. She does all of this. Okay? Martha is a lady. She's, you know, um, her name, it, it, it's lady or mistress. Mistress means a married woman. Not like today. This guy's married, but he has a mistress. That isn't the same meaning. Um, so I went into it to make sure. And it's uh, a mistress means a married woman. Um, it's derived from, like I had told you, it's a direct reference from Strong's number 1509, meaning unfruitful or barren. If she's not at the feet of Jesus, if she's not in communion with him, if she's not having fellowship with him, if she's more concerned about the tradition rather than the, the relationship, she will never be fruitful for Jesus Christ. She was barren and unfruitful. Okay, Not to say that she remained that way, but just the setup. I'm setting the story up so you get it. Um, we see, uh, the, it's, it, we're going to start reading in John chapter 10, verse 22. And you're going to find out that, because before I get into the story of Lazarus, I needed to go before it so you can get a grip on what's actually, you know, what's going on at the time. It starts off in John chapter 10, verse 22. It says the Feast of Dedication was at hand. Now the Feast of Dedication was actually the Festival of Lights. This is Hanukkah. Y'all with me? Now Hanukkah takes place in a winter, which is in December, the Festival of Lights. Amen. And it would have been around December 21st or 22nd. This is actually uh, an allusion or will allude to 
that um, the festival of lights in December is actually when Gabriel announced to Mary that she was going to receive seed to, you know, and be impregnated. Mary was impregnated on, on the day of the Feast of Hanukkah or the Festival of Lights because that's the day that the light of the world came into the woman in December. And then it was, you take nine months, the incubation period of a woman, and you find that Jesus would have been born around September 11th, 9-11. <laughs> Can you see why they flipped the dates and made 9-11 bad? Huh? Wow. Feast. He would have been born in the Feast of Tabernacles. That's right. So, this proves beyond the shadow of a doubt. That's why in, if we find out, and you'll read in other, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that he, when he declares to be the light of the world, it's doing Hanukkah. So, he follows what's going on. Now he's the resurrection so when is he going to raise Lazarus? Well it's going to be in the springtime in the Passover season because that's when all the resurrections are going to be. Watch this. So we see that um, the feast of dedication is Hanukkah which is the festival of lights. That feast began with um, um, when um, uh, what's his name? Maccabees, Judas Maccabees, you know, had uh, one day oil, one day of oil, they lit the candles in the temple and it burned for eight days and that's when they began to keep the feast. And Jesus went to this feast because this, it was, you know, he was the light of the world. So at the festival of lights, he's the light of the world that was sent in December that Mary was impregnated. He wasn't born in December. Mary was impregnated in December. The announcement came from Gabriel and because um, angels or witness or messengers. So you see the one, watch this. This is really good stuff. You see, um, uh, Mary was fertile ground, and um, this is where, um, you know, uh, that God imparts his seed into. Now, what I found kind of amazing was Mary is fertile ground, and here we got this other Mary, you know, that is looking for a husband and wanting to be married and good ground and all this kind of stuff, kind of a little contrast. But we see Mary's the fertile ground that Jesus is planted into. And um, this speaks of his coming when he came into the world as a child. So this would speak of his coming. Now watch this. Um, now the festival of lights. This is going to speak of his coming as well. Why? Because we know that Jesus God or God created the light of the world, the sun, the S-U-N, on the fourth day. Right? So, um, here it is, we see 4,000 years after creation, the fourth day, Jesus, the light of the world, come to a woman. So here we got the festival of lights, light was created on the fourth day, and Jesus comes to the earth on the fourth day or 4,000 years from the beginning. Amen. From Adam to Noah, 2,000 years, from Noah to Jesus, 2,000 years, two days, four days total. Um, so the light came on the fourth day or 4,000 years after creation. Amen. All right, now... Um, it says, there's a passage we're going to read in there that talks about Bethel Beret. Bethel Beret is where Jesus was baptized beyond the Jordan. And what's really amazing about that is Bethel Beret, where Jesus was baptized, was in the Jordan River. We know where that was at. But Bethel Beret actually means passageway of the house. Wow, the gate, the door. So Jesus, when he was baptized by John, he was baptized in the passageway or the gate or the door which would bring them into the promised land. Amen. Right where Joshua crossed. Amen. Right? Wow. So, um, in Jordan, the Jordan River means descending. So, the Jordan he was baptized in. The Sea of Galilee, out of the Sea of Galilee flows a river which is the Jordan River and it goes into the Dead Sea the Sea of Galilee means life giver the Jordan means descending and it descended into the Dead Sea to give it life again so we see 
the life giver descended down to give that which was dead life again. This is where he's baptized at. See, it all speaks of him. So, um, and it says, he talks about something. It says, now, when Jesus left, uh, he went beyond the Jordan. Beyond the Jordan would it be on the wilderness side. So he wouldn't have been, he would have been in the, the, the Jordanian, he would have been on the side that Moses was in before Joshua crossed over. So he went out of the promised land. You're going to see this when I start reading. And Jordan means descending, okay, abode. When he gets the message that Lazarus is sick, it, it was two days he was sick. But he stayed another two days before he went. So a four days total, you know, before, you know, he goes and resurrects, you know, raises Lazarus from the dead. And a lot of you guys know what that is. Um, um, and let's see, it says, he abode to stay two more days. Then, after these two days more, he raises Lazarus, which is called a friend of God. He raises him from the dead, his grave clothes are removed, and he is set free. Now the Bible says that we're all friends of God. Now if you believe all of this, that means the Lord is coming for you too. But you have to believe it. You can't be like Martha, and I'm going to show you. Martha has all the appearances to be that which is right. But Jesus nails her. And I'm going to show you how when we read the story. Are y'all ready? Okay. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, your word is amazing and it's awesome. I thank you for your word. Lord, may it be food for us spiritually to feed us, Lord. Lord, let us come and feast at the, at the master's table, Lord. Father, I pray that what we eat today, Father, will be our uh, life-giving food for tomorrow. In Jesus' name. You guys, it was good to see you, Brother Roland and Brother David. I love y'all. And thank y'all for y'all blessing. Tell your family hello and everybody else we said hello to them. Amen. Enjoy your, uh, your picnic. No, your reunion. Family reunion. That's good stuff. Love you guys. So, get your Bibles out. Get your Bibles out. We're going to start reading in chapter 10, verse 22, and I'm going to read a little bit of uh, John. John chapter 10, verse 22, and uh, I'm going to start reading. It says, um, and it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and I'm not going to explain this stuff to you so y'all know now, right? I went over it. Okay. okay. Um, my mic might be a little bit hot. Um, so um, it says, and it was at Jerusalem of the Feast of Dedication, it was winter, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Amen. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Then Jesus answered to them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So that thing, that which we do will bear witness to who we are. You know that. It's John chapter... John chapter 10, I'm um, in verse 26 now. So the things that we do will be a testimony to who we are. Okay? But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. And I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand I and my father are one then the Jews took up stones again to stone him Jesus answered them many good works have I showed you for uh, from my uh, from my father for which of those will you stone me the Jews answered him saying for a good work we stone thee not but for blasphemy and because thou being a man makest thyself God answer them is it not written in your law in your law in your law is it not written in your law I said ye are gods if that's in Psalms 82 verse 6 if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be broken say ye of him whom the father hath sanctified and sent into the world thou blasphemest because I said I am the son of God if I do not the works of my father believe but if I do though ye 
Test, test. There you go. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know, and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of the hand and went away beyond the Jordan. Now I'm setting the text for you where he went, okay? So he left. This was during the Feast of Dedication or Hanukkah. It's in December. All of this has happened. Now he left and went where he was baptized by John, okay? Therefore they sought again to take him, and he escaped out of their hand. And he went away again beyond Jordan into a place where John uh, at first baptized baptized and they and there they abode meaning they stayed and many resorted unto him and said John did no miracle but all these things that John spake of this man were true and many believed on him there so this is he's there for a little time now let's see how much time so now we're going from the feast of dedication now to Passover watch now a certain man was sick named Lazarus and I told you what his name means friend of God or God has help of Bethany um, the town of Mary and our sister Martha it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with the ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick therefore his sisters sent unto him saying Lord behold he whom lovest thou is sick when Jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified Amen. Um, uh, be glorified thereby. Okay? Um, so this is, okay. When, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that Lazarus was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Because you guys know, after two days from Jesus' death, he's coming. He's going to raise us up from the dead. One day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and now goest uh, thou there again? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in a day? I like this right here, because listen what he's doing. Now, he just told us about two days, and now he's making a direct reference to time. Or well, they're not 12 hours in a day. It's always been like that. So he's alluding to something. This is all about when he's going to come, and when we're going to be resurrected, the friends of God. Okay? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? And if a man walk in the day, he stumbleth. Not because he seeth light, not... Not, wait, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. Why is he making this allegory or this illusion right here about the light of the world? Because it was just prior to this, they was at the Feast of Dedication. And this disciple just reminded him that while he was at the Feast of Dedication, that, you know, uh, is where they was going to kill him. So when Jesus answers him, he makes the illusion to back that I am the light of the world. You, you, you with me? Okay? Right. So he says, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. Uh, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. Amen. These things saith he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, uh, that I may awake him out of his sleep. So this is all about Lazarus now being raised from the dead after two days. He's the light of the world. And if we're in him, we won't walk in darkness. And if we're walking in him, we're in the light so that that day won't overtake us as a thief. Right? It won't come upon us as a thief because we don't walk in darkness. Watch this. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep... Uh, it's good. He'll recover. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking uh, rest and sleep. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes. Why is he glad for their sakes? 
um, he says, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto them. Believe what? Believe. I'm glad I wasn't there because if I would have been there, I'd have healed this sickness. But I'm glad that I wasn't there for your sake so that I'm going to show you that so that you'll believe. So and if you believe, you'll be raised up too. Amen. It's all for them to believe. Right. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas which is called Didymus. That's the guy who, you know, was crazy. I won't believe in all this stuff. You know, unto his fellow servants. Let us also go, that we may die with him. And this guy's one time, I won't believe it till I put my hands in his side. And now he's saying, come on, let's all go. We'll just all die. He, you could kind of get his picture, right? He's kind of up and down. I could see him going there. Man, y'all sure y'all want to go? I ain't going. <laughs> so he's, with his mouth he speaks, but with his actions he does a different thing. Exactly what Martha does. Amen. All right. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow servants, let us go that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had laid in the grave four days already. Now, um, once the body is seen four days, it sees corruption. That's it. It's, you know, um, the Bible talks about in Psalms that um, Jesus wouldn't see corruption, that he would be raised up because the fourth day represents the flesh corrupts, breaks down. But to show he has power even over that, he, that's why he waited, okay? It was four days total. Um, then when Jesus came, he found that he had, uh, had laid in the grave for four days already. Now Bethany, house of poverty, was nigh unto Jerusalem, about um, a mile and a half, you could say, a mile and three quarters or whatever. And it says, uh, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary, now watch this, to comfort them concerning their brother. So many of the Jews came. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat still in the house. There's a big difference. Watch this. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And that was true, you know. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask God, uh, God will give it thee. It sounds like she has the faith, right? Yeah. All right, that's what it sounds like. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Listen, listen, listen where our faith is at. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Wow. Here it is. It's, this whole story is being alluded to when we're going to be raised up. The resurrection. See how it's all now gearing around this end time. So it's what's happening there applies for you and me. And then she says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Wow. He's questioning her faith. Because he knows she really doesn't believe. And I'm going to show you. He outright says it. Uh, she saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son which uh, come uh, would come into that should come into the world. And when she and when she had uh, so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister, secretly saying, The Master is come; he calleth for thee. He calleth for the one. He's calling for the one that had faith. Watch. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now. Jesus was not yet come unto the town, but was in the, that place where Martha had met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, and she saw him, she fell down at his feet. Did, Mary, did Martha do that? No. No. See, Martha didn't have, Martha didn't know who, who he was. Mary did. She went straight to his feet, right? Saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. She said the same thing that Martha did, right? It seems like everything's all good. But watch the difference between unbelief and belief.
When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came her, he groaned in his spirit, and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? Didn't ask Martha that. Didn't ask Martha that. They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold now, he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? See, this is not about him healing the sick. This is about him raising the dead. This is about believing and having faith that, like it says in Titus 2.13, the blessed hope and the glorious appearing, the blessed hope is the resurrection. Do you really believe it? Or is it just a Martha deal to you? Do you, you know, run around and look like you're busy about the Lord's business and you talk about Him and you say these things, but where is your heart at? Is it at His feet? Is it there? Is it looking for his presence? It says, Jesus therefore again groaning himself uh, cometh to the grave. It was a cave of stone that was laid upon it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him. Listen to Martha now. Martha's attitude. Because she don't believe. Right? Uh, Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinks, for he's been dead four days. Because she didn't believe. She didn't believe. Right? Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Wow. She didn't believe. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that thou mayest believe that he has sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, friend of God, friends of God, come forth. Those who really believe. And he's going to separate us. He says, uh, and we all heard, you know, if he would have said anything else come forth, they all would have came out the grave. Right. You know, we know that. But he called forth the friend of God. That's what he called forth. There's a difference between a Martha and a Mary. There's a difference between, you know, uh, doing good things being part, but not setting time aside for him, you know, is not good. It's not good. And I was just corrected on it yesterday, you know. Um, and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. That's a picture of God setting us free, raising us up from the dead after two days or two thousand years. Because he took the keys to death, hell, and the grave that clothes us, that covers us. But he calls us out of those grave clothes, out of the ground. Y'all with me? Amen. Amen. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen these things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees and the councils and said, What do we do? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and our nation. Wow, they was worried about their house. Huh? Kind of sound like Martha. They got a house just like Martha does, but no relationship. No presence. Missed it, right? And one of the men named Caiaphas, being of the high priest of the same year, said unto them, uh, "Ye know not, uh, you know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation should perish not." And this spake he not of himself, but being the high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Wow, wow! Did you hear that? He, realized, he didn't even realize what he said. It's expedient for one man to die. He says this because he's the Passover lamb and he doesn't even know it. 
and not for that nation only, but also that he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. That's us. You and I. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together to put him to death. Jesus therefore uh, walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence into the country near the wilderness and to a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand. Wow, so you see the time of the resurrection, right? It was at Pat, right, at, right around Passover. We're going to see how close it was. It says, And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves among, among themselves as they stood in the temple. What think ye? But both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it, that, it might, uh, that they might take him. Then... Jesus, six days before Passover, so this is all during the time of Passover. Um, uh, so this is six days before Passover. So this would be the eighth, right? Six days before the Passover, this would be the eighth, the beginning of the week. It says, watch this. Then six days, why? Because after 6,000 years of history, we're going to be resurrected, right? Then Jesus, six days before Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, uh, which he had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Uh, there they made him supper, and Martha served. Wow. That's a key scripture right there. Martha served. Why is that a key scripture? Because, but Lazarus was one of the one that sat at the table with him. Then Mary took, uh, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped them with her hair, and the whole house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of the disciples, uh, uh, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, uh, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pieces and given to the poor? This is he, not that he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, and he had uh, the bag and bore what was there put in. Now, if we just skip a couple of verses. I'm going to read it. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burial has she done this. And then if you look at verse 12, it talks about the triumphal entry, Nisan 10. So this is all set right before Passover. Now I want you to look at this scripture um, and we're done. This scripture is... Uh, um, we see Martha in... Go to Luke, Luke chapter 10, because I went and read the accounts in all of them. Luke chapter 10, in verse 38. Luke 10, 38. It says, um, Mary and Martha is contrasted. Check this out. Now it came to pass as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain uh, woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. Wow. Right? And came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she should help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful, anxious, and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. One thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. One thing is needful, and that's to be at the feet of Jesus. We can be... Right. That's it. So, the message today that the Lord wanted to uh, share with you guys um, was, you know, take time. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. We need to take time. There's many people that profess Jesus. There are many people that are busy saying, 
you know, but they give him no time. Yeah. You need to take time and sit at his feet. How do you sit at his feet? When you sit down at that word, that's the gospel. The gospel is the gospel of peace. How beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel. This is the feet of Jesus. He walked it. He lived it. Your actions will tell me who you are. Your actions tell the world who you are. Father, your message is so good. Lord, I thank you, Father, that uh, you gave me my wife to tell me to go sit at your feet yesterday so that I can hear you and not be concerned about things that really doesn't matter. But what really matters is just to be at your feet, Lord. And Father, you've given us six days that we can work. And I did say that I was going to set aside Friday for you, Lord, so that I can hear you. So Lord, I just uh, forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me, Father, for not uh, setting that day aside like I'm supposed to. I should have just went straight to it. And Lord, I just uh, I recommit to you that, Lord, that Fridays, Lord, is, is uh, a time that I need to just set apart for you. Not, not for just a time that I need, Father, to be with you. Not so that I have a message, but just so that I can be with you. Lord, I thank you. I love you. I praise you. I thank you for the people that were here today. Father, I ask your blessings to be upon them. In Jesus' name, you guys be blessed. Amen. Oh.